here, but that first year, year and a half in China, you know, you talked talk before, pretty tough. What, did you did you use that rookie experience? Yes. You know, just, like, to, to, to turn it around? <clears throat> I mean, people ask me about Shanxi. I, like I tell people, it's a great experience. That's what Shanxi is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great experience. You go there, it's a great experience. You know, the people are really nice. People, people show me a lot of love, you know what I'm saying? I got it. I'm, that's the truth. But it's a great experience. And, you know, from going from America to, you know, I flew into Beijing. I was like, oh, this is cool. You know, <laughs> this is nice. And then I had a transfer. Like, I'm looking down, I'm like, oh, this, this is all right. And then I transfer, and then I go to, I go to another place. Now when I get to the other place, I'm like, okay, okay, <laughs> this is different. <laughs> but it's an opportunity, right? So Vegas can be choosing, right? Vegas can be choosing. And at that time, I wanted to play basketball. And I wasn't thinking about where I was going. I was really on a mission. I just want to play. That's it. If I can play and get back on the court, I can get back to doing what it is that I do. But that was a mental challenge. You know, it was a mental challenge. Four Shan was, was, was okay, but Shan she was, it was, a it was a completely different environment. Like literally, um, noodles was my thing. Like that's the noodle place. For real. That's the noodle place. Uh, one more question. Uh, yes, sir. Um, yeah, I was actually just about to ask about kind of how culturally you've been able to adapt. I mean, most NBA guys would come over here um, a year and back over trying to get that next contract um, and really make it stick. I mean, realize, so you weren't going to go back to the NBA. How have you, I guess, both um, made the commitment, it was mentally like, I'm going to be here and I'm going to be committed to this, and then knowing transitioning into your post career, uh, making it and making it your life. Um, culturally, is it something like New York City, Brooklyn? This big city, it's kind of like Chinatown, but not quite, and it's just on a bigger scale. Like, how have you been able to adapt and adjust mentally? First of all, <laughs> this is China. <laughs> That's America. <laughs> America's a dot, right? It's a real, it's a real small place. Like, you really, I mean, I can say that from living in New York, I come from a big city, but it's really not that big when you think about places where there are 30 million people in Beijing, right? It's Brooklyn, Manhattan, can't compare it, right? So, you know, for me coming here, when I first came here, I didn't tell anybody that I was coming to China. No secret, I kept it a secret. I was dealing with a lot, I was depressed. All of the different challenges that you go through when you're depressed, now I want to kill myself, I want to die, but I didn't do it, right? So, go through all of these different things. I lost my mom, I'm, my, my, my mom, my mom was uh, walking pneumonia after we buried my father, my coach died, my aunt died, all in the same night. So I was dealing with a whole bunch of stuff at one time. So when I came here, when I came to China, like my mother said, you know, sometimes people do things for you, you know, you want them to do things. And then sometimes you need people to do things. And at the time when I came to China, I needed the love that China gave me in order for me to keep going. So when I first landed and got off the plane, mind you, when I was flying over, I was still dealing with depression. I was dealing with a variety of different things. And when I landed and I was going down the escalator, I seen all of these people. It was like 4,000 people. So I'm asking my friend, the guy that I'm, my friend now, one of my best friends at the time, you know, I, I'm asking, I'm like, yo, who are all of these people here for? Why are all these people here? It's a lot of people out there. He said, they all here for you. I said, they here for me. <laughs> so now I'm going from being, you know, depressed and all of this. Now I got this what my friend in America called it, I had a shit grin on my face. <laughs> and said, oh, I seen Stephon Marbury on USA Today, he got a shit grin on his face, he looks really happy. <laughs> I couldn't stop smiling, right? Because I'm like, oh, they here. So now I'm, get, I'm receiving all of this love from all of these people, and I'm like, man, this is different. Like, I'm not used to, used to this. So now I go to a press conference, 
have a press conference for about an hour. I'm asked every question that you can possibly be asked about America. Yes, I did this with Larry Brown. Yes, I said that. Yes, I did that. Yeah, I did it. You got me. I did it. You want me, you want me to tell you something else? And then I said to them, I said, okay, you've asked me all of the questions that you've been asking me. I want to ask you guys a question. I said, can you judge me based upon what you see and what you hear, not from what somebody said or what somebody wrote in America? And they said, okay, that's fair. That's fine. So after my first two weeks in Shanxi, everybody started to get to know me, and I'm getting to know everybody else. Now, KFC is one of my best friends. <laughs> my first company, right? One of my, one of my favorites. <laughs> you know chicken, you can go to chicken, it's always a go-to, right? <laughs> so now I'm getting tired of KFC. <laughs> And now my stomach is touching my back for real. I'm in Jensu province. And I'm like, all right. It's a buffet line. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna get out of this one, but I'm not in the KFC today. <laughs> so I start eating the food. And I didn't think about how it looked. I just started eating. I was like, oh, this is not bad. You know, I start eating it. And then when I started eating more and more and start sitting at the table with my, with my teammates, you know, opposed to sitting at the farm table, because it's like, oh, these guys are the farm guys, they gotta get the farm table, right? So now I'm sitting at the table with, the, with my teammates and I'm eating all of the food, and I'm like, all right, this is really good, but I don't know how to say I want that, I want that, I want that, right? Because the table's spinning, and you know what's happening when the table's spinning, right? The chopsticks are really going fast. Especially when you're playing with hungry Chinese basketball players and you eat two times a day, right? So you know lunch and dinner is always 12 o'clock, always going to be around 5, 30, 6 o'clock. So I'm getting all of this experience. And every day that this is happening, I start getting like them, taking the food fast, doing everything, right? So now this is, the eating part is the biggest part of the culture, I think. Because you eat, you drink, you know when you drink, you know what happened after that. <laughs> you drink the Baggio. <laughs> and now I'm getting mixed into the culture. And then now I start seeing it's consistent in the same movement, the same vibration, same feeling every day in what it is that I'm doing. And then I say, I go back to America after being here the first year. Because I was only here for like six to seven days when I first when I first came um, to play in CBA. I was only here for half the season. So now I'm used to the food. And now I go back to America. And now I want to eat Chinese food. <laughs> And people ask, I'm, I'm like, yo, you know a good Chinese? They're like, no, I don't want the corner store Chinese restaurant. I want to go to a real Chinese restaurant. They're like, man, you've been in China way too long. I've been like, here for a couple of months. I'm like, no, I just got a craving for it. So then I come back the next season, and I stayed a whole year. When I go to Fort Shannon, I learn all of the different things that I'm learning about Fort Shannon. You know, Bruce Lee was here, and I'm like, I don't know if Bruce here or not. <laughs> they telling me that he was there, right? So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to sleep with that. That's my idol, right? I'm one of my idols. So I'm picking up the culture more and more and more and more. Now the talking part comes. Now that's one of my difficult parts, right? But I can feel what they're saying, right? Like I don't know what's being said, but I know, right? From it being translated. So all of these different things that started happening to me, and then I go to Beijing. I come to Beijing and we win the championship, it's like, I became Chinese. <laughs> I got a green card, give me a statue. I'm like, I'm not going nowhere to myself. <laughs> Dude's like, oh, you gonna, when you gonna come back to the NBA? I said, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I won the championship, now you want me to come back to the NBA and play? I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna do that. And I was like, oh, you can make uh, five to $10 million. I was like, damn, that's a lot of money. <laughs> and then, about a week later, <coughs> culture, this is how the culture got me. They, they post up on uh, Hoop Chinas. Hoop Chinas is the one that built my statue. So they go, oh, being that stuff on Marbury Camp, one MVP, uh, if 
five and a million people who vote for him to get a statue, we're gonna erect the statue. In an hour, it was like 500,000 people. I said, damn, I called my friend, I said, my, my translator, I said, Kevin, I, they said if a million people vote, they're gonna build the statue and put it outside of Wukasa. He said, you're lying. I said, I'm telling you, look at the website. He said, y'all me don't even got a statue. How do you gonna get a statue <laughs> big black? <laughs> What does it mean being black? I don't know. <laughs> You're black. You're in China. Yeah, I don't got a statue. He said it again. I was like, okay, that's true. That's real. So now they, they build this statue, and then they're telling me, you know, I don't know if was talking, he's like, you know, Chinese culture, this is the first time that you've done something like this, blah, blah, blah. And that feeling of love and, you know, it wasn't about basketball, it never was about basketball. It was about what you did, the commitment that you gave to the city, you know, helping us win the championship. You don't know how this makes us feel. We can walk with our chest up, like, you know, in basketball now. And we beat Guangdong. So it was like, you beat the juggernaut, right? But I couldn't have done all of that without eating the food with my teammates with, you know, when I was in Forshan, without trying to learn some of the language, without any, all of those different things that I was allowing to come into my mind, into my heart, I wouldn't have been able to do some of the things that I've been doing. So the culture is really what moved me, the way how, how kind people are, how, and I'm not saying that because it's Chinese people here. I'm saying that because it's, it's real. You know, so for me, you know, that, like, that was how I got integrated into the culture. That's how um, I've been able to feel the love here and to get the love here while I commit myself to the culture, to help the younger generation, because I feel like, you know, China really helped me during the time in my life. Forget about basketball. When I needed, when I needed somebody to help me in my life, you know, the country did that, so. All right. Thank you. 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 Thank